contraptions everywhere you look. What's that? An infusion station. It dispenses souls in exchange for credits. Through hard work, citizens can obtain the peace of mind provided by spare souls. It's the way of life for Alexandrians and has been for quite some time. But I imagine it must be difficult for outsiders to comprehend. That's putting it lightly. To be honest, it sounds disturbing. Still, I won't dismiss it out of hand. Practices like these don't arise from nothing. There's a reason why your culture is the way it is, and I'd like to understand. Won't you tell us some of your realm's history? Very well. Be warned, though, that it may take a while. In the distant past, over a thousand years ago it said, lightning energy began to swell in our world. According to ancient records that date back around eight centuries, the rainy season spanned a quarter of the year, during which time severe thunderstorms ravaged the land. Four centuries later, this season had lengthened to nearly half the year. The trend continued, with our ancestors spending longer and longer languishing beneath storm clouds. Crops failed, and livestock starved. But amidst this growing desperation, a miraculous material was discovered that promised salvation. Electrope. The stuff that's used everywhere here. Indeed. One day, when out inspecting a forest after lightning had caused a fire, a villager came upon a curious black ore none had seen before. Testing revealed that the ore possessed a singular property. It could store lightning and convert it to other energies. In that instant, the scourge of endless storms became a blessing. Dubbed Electrope, the ore found use in myriad inventions and dramatically improved people's lives. So much so, in fact, that all nations soon became dependent upon it, despite the difficulty of obtaining it in quantity. Supply was chronically scarce, and when nations couldn't meet their needs with their own deposits, some resorted to taking Electrope from others. Fighting was isolated and sporadic, until Electrope came to be used in warfare. First in the weaponry of invaders, then in the countermeasures of defenders, and then in every aspect of combat where an advantage might be had. This served only to exacerbate the ore shortage, leading to further escalation. Before long, the entire world was engulfed in a terrible war known as the Storm Surge. As the war came to a head, Alexandria's neighbor, Lindblom, committed its stores of Electrope to the production of a weapon of mass destruction. They deployed it on the front lines and triggered a calamity of frightful magnitude. Not even their own scientists had anticipated the force of the lightning that was unleashed. The energy inundated the entire continent. So that's how your world came to be this way. Yes. 
You truly know a great many things that I don't. I should like to learn about you too sometime. But to continue the tale, the people of Alexandria had already lost much to the war. They lost almost everything else to the Levin. Those who survived bore deep scars, tormented by the memory of loved ones taken too soon. Though they yet lived, the cruel specter of death was with them always. Seeking a solution, our scientists turned once more to Electrope, and after extensive research, they developed the means to preserve memory and soul. Physical death isn't the end. So long as our memories endure, we may live on. This belief sustained us then, and it sustains us now, granting us comfort. That's quite a tale. Your Majesty, help me! I beg you, help me! W what's the matter? I've got no souls left. N not a single one! But the lot at Soul Supply refused to give me any! Please, you must do something! My apologies, Your Majesty. This man, he does no work. Instead, he drinks his days away on true view. He has only himself to blame, if he has no credits for souls. That's not true! I'm a fighter at the Arcadian. Or rather, I was. I haven't been allowed to fight because of the King's decree. It isn't my choice! I see. You're a brave warrior of the arena. I want to help you, I sincerely do. But I cannot give you preferential treatment. Then open up the Arcadian again, so I can fight! I'm sorry, but that's not my decision to make. The King requires feral souls for war. He doesn't wish for them to be expended on amusements. <laughs> You're useless! A queen in naught but name! Insolent wretch! How dare you take that tone with Her Majesty! It's quite all right. Such things don't bother me, nor do I think ill of this man. Hear me. Though I cannot grant you a soul, I mean it when I say I want you to live. I love all of you equally, dearly. You are as family to me, and it pains me to see you deny yourself hope. I want you to find a happiness all your own, even if you must grow it from the smallest seed of joy. Out there, somewhere, is a reason for you to smile again. We all need to vent our frustrations from time to time. I will always be willing to lend an ear. Yes, Mum. Of course. Even without a spare soul, I suppose I'm fine as long as I stay in Solution 9. I apologize for my rudeness. Good day to you. Keep your chin up, my friend. And when you feel better, I'm sure you'll find another way to apply your talents. Sorry you had to see that. Let's keep moving, shall we? Right, 
I believe we've visited all the main facilities. With that, I declare our tour concluded. That man from before... Does that sort of thing happen often? Somewhat. It's unavoidable. Hardships are a fact of life. Our soul management system has sustained our realm for generations, but it isn't without flaws. For one, people have become accustomed to having spare souls. Without them, they feel vulnerable and anxious. Some claim it may also have contributed to a decline in births. Just thinking out loud, but would it be possible to do away with the system? <sighs> no. I know it isn't easy to change one's beliefs and way of life. The Mamulja had their reasons for their reliance on blessed siblings, much as you have yours for souls. But if we defeated Zorolja, you'd be able to make all the decisions, right? Then we could work together to fix things, restore your realm to where it belongs, and see where we can go from there. Listen to me. There's something that I need to tell you. What is it? Uh, actually, never mind. It's nothing of import. Well, it was lovely showing you around. Uh, of... Of course. Of course. Thanks so much for the tour. We've learned not only about your realm, but you as well. For now, our priority is Aralja. But once we've dealt with him, perhaps I can return the favor and show you to Lihyola. I'd like that very much. It seems I've no choice but to continue down this path. Forgive me, Vau Wuklamat, but I must disappoint you. <laughs> 